Thank you so much. Morning, everybody. I hope you're OK. I hope you're well. Uh, my name is Dan Dorst. I'm the Undergraduate Course Director for Sport and Exercise at Staffordshire University. And I'm also the PE, um, PGCE and Undergraduate Course Leader as well. And I've just been asked to come and talk to you today a little bit about studying in HE, uh, studying sport and exercise in higher education, uh, and a little bit of a focus on staff University at the end, but more around you, your development and uh, potential career paths and opportunities for you to progress in sport and exercise. If you just bear with me one minute, I'm just going to share my screen. I've got a presentation to, uh, to include. OK, is that loaded up? Can somebody just confirm for me we're, we're good to go? All good, Dan, yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, OK, so some aims for this session then. We're just going to look at some uh, different information regarding degree paths and careers you might follow. Um, what to look for and ask about when you're going to your different universities, different open days, um, some of the key bits of information uh, that ha might help you make your decision of where you might want to study um, HE, some benefits of studying at Staffordshire University, and then where to find out a little bit more information specifically around sports and exercise courses. So a little bit of a challenge. Um, I know mics are off, uh, etc. So I won't ask you to comment, but I'll give you a minute or so. Um, if you could just consider the number of sports related professionals that an elite athlete might need help from, to reach the top in their sport, how many can you name? So uh, I don't know if you just want to make a note next to the side of you, but I'll just give it a minute for those who watch and record it, just have a think um, to, to try and list as many as they can. OK, we'll go on to discuss some of these. So I asked some of our undergraduates this, some of our um, students who'd already graduated and are in employment about different career opportunities that they're, they're seeking or considering or that they've actually gone and, and, and moved into if they were um, graduates of ours. And these are some of the key ones that came up in the list. So let's see how many you've got. So a sport development officer um, helps organise and range facilities, local areas, lots of projects to help people get engaged in sport, which might be the starting point. Uh, for somebody who's a professional sports person. Sports marketing and promotions, obviously really important, slightly different spin on sport and exercise, but it's how the, the competitions, players, individuals uh, are marketed and promoted for financial gain for individuals or companies. Uh, sports journalism, um, you know, whether that's TV, radio, newspaper, uh, there's a range of different sports journalism jobs, uh, podcasts at the minute uh, are really, really uh, on, the, on the rise and increasing and it's actually part of our undergraduate assessment program. And I know it's becoming more and more common um, that podcasts are included. Sports management. So that could be um, actually managing teams um, through a range of different performance aspects or participation uh, events. Fitness instructor. So PTs, strength and conditioning coaches. Sports therapists who, who work with uh, players pre post games uh, and to prevent injury. PE teachers, again, sort of the starting block, getting people engaged and started in sport. Uh, exercise physiologists, so they do a range of different testing on performers, uh, looking at different things such as uh, muscle strength, power, endurance, agility, speed, etc. An actual sports coach, strength and conditioning coach, sports psychologist. So um, if a sports a strength and conditioning coach works with the body, the sports psychologist works with the mind. Uh, tries to increase people's performance by developing their confidence, their resilience, uh, their emotional control. A lifestyle consultant, so a lot of people don't know too much about this, um, but a lifestyle consultant uh, are becoming increasingly popular, particularly amongst football clubs. They have a range of lifestyle consultants for players who basically organise and arrange um, every minute of that player's day from the minute they wake up uh, to the minute they go to sleep, including uh, meal plans, uh, organising the coaching, organising transport, um, helping them uh, get to different events that they need to be at, 
uh, for the marketing promotion. So they can tie it all together, uh, really. And the last one I put is sports scientist. I know I mentioned about physiology a little bit earlier, but sports science is a bit more broad than that, as, we'll, as you'll find out as we go through this, this presentation. So these are the degrees we offer in sport. They're offered at the majority of universities. There's a couple of others that we don't offer that I've got on the next slide as well. But you normally have courses around physical education. There's normally courses around sports coaching. Uh, we have sport and exercise science, and we also have a pathway from our sport and exercise science degree into a strength and conditioning program. Uh, we have football coaching and performance, which is an accelerated degree. We have a degree in sports therapy and a degree in sport and exercise psychology, which is the first in the world distance learning course. There are a couple of areas we don't cover that other universities do, such as physiotherapy, uh, performance analysis, sports nutrition and sports policy and management. And, and hopefully when you thought about those careers that I'd asked about previously, um, you know, your chosen career was on the list. The next key thing to think about is, OK, well, what, what degree uh, do you need that's going to give you the best platform and the best access to jobs in that area? And that kind of leads me into different types of degrees. So there's um, two different main types of degree, which is BA and a BSc. A BA is actually a Bachelor of Arts and a BSc is a Bachelor of Science. And there are a couple of unique differences. A BSc route normally is more scientific, so it includes uh, a lot more information in regards nutrition, uh, exercise physiology, biomechanics, sports psychology, uh, etc. A Bachelor of Arts route is more uh, around why we do things, so sociology of sport, political aspects, philosophy of sport, uh, sports management and you know, the history of sport as well. If we just scroll back uh, to the degrees, the majority of our degrees of BSCs, except for our sports coaching, which is a BA, uh, which considers much more, um, has much, many more modules that consider the sociology of sport. With regard to the other um, courses we don't uh, deliver, but will be delivered elsewhere, uh, sports therapy would usually be a BSC. Performance analysis could be either or, but typically would be a BSC, as would sports nutrition. Sports policy and management would typically be a BA degree, a Bachelor of Arts. In terms of academic standing, there's not actually a difference between a BA and a BSc. It just gives uh, you know, people who look at your degree title an idea of some of the modules you may have studied uh, with regards to the scientific content and elements of them. So sports sciences, BSc courses, if you were to do a dissertation or a research project, what you have to do at nearly uh, every university you'll go to will have a research project at the end in your final year. Uh, some of the questions you might be researching on a BSc uh, might be things such as how does heat or nutrition or training affect performance? How can we improve the efficiency of movement or the design of trainers? How do our emotions affect performance? These are all scientific um, based studies. So if you're on a BA course, some of the areas you might investigate would be things such as how did rugby emerge and develop? How does UK athletics youth policy compare with other elite sporting countries? And how does socioeconomic status impact on medal winning potential amongst athletes? So you can see there where there's slight variance and differences. So some of the benefits of studying with, with staffs, but this is um, you know, consistent across a range of universities. There's not too much here that's that specific just yet. Um, one thing to look for, if you are an elite sports performer, the majority of universities will have sports scholarship programmes. Um, and that's key to have a look at because they'll offer you a range of different um, support. Some of that will be financial. Um, so sometimes they'll reduce course fees, etc. Whereas at Staffordshire University, our sports scholarship program, which I'll come on to in the next slide, um, provides much more of a holistic support. Um, so we provide different workshops for psychology, nutrition, uh, sports science um, to help you improve your performance as opposed to just a one off fee to come and represent the university. You'll have opportunities to play in what's called the Bucks League if you are a, a performer, uh, which is the British University and Colleges League. Um, you'll play across the country with, regardless what university you represent. And most universities will have what we call a varsity competition, which is a bit of a head to head. Um, can last anywhere between a day to a week, depending on the number of events in the varsity. Uh, ours at Staffordshire University is against Keele University and it's held every year. And we have them, um, you know, when students win an event, it, it counts a certain amount of points towards the overall competition. On top of that, all universities will have enhanced recreational sports programmes if they're running sports courses. 
So it's not all about performance sport. There is lots of recreational opportunities as well. And when I talk about sport, I'm, I'm, you know, the books literally uh, range competitions in almost every sport you can imagine. So um, surfing, snowboarding, skiing, shooting, archery, football, rugby, netball, um, you know, swimming, athletics, every sport you can think of. Uh, there's normally a books competition for it. There's very, very few that books don't run. So this is a bit more about our scholarship programme. And, and like I said, I'm showing you this now, but it's worth looking at other universities you're considering to see what they might be offering if you're an elite performer. Um, so our students who are successful, which is county level and above, we have a sort of a three-tier approach. We have a gold, silver and a bronze scholarship. Um, bronze would be a sort of county level. Uh, silver would be a, a regional level. And gold would be national or international level. Um, you get performance athlete kit, full gym and facilities access, so you get free gym memberships, strength and conditioning support, so you have three or four sessions a year um, in regards to strength and conditioning where they put together specific plans for, for you and your development. The same with sports psychology and nutrition. You get free access to our sports therapy clinics to get treatment whenever it's needed. We support your employability and help you uh, gain dual career advice and a really good example of that, and again other universities will do similar. Uh, we had a PGC student who was a Olympic standard kickboxer, represented Team GB, uh, and I know she had support from a different university prior to coming to us as an undergrad. And when she came to us as a postgraduate, we supported her also in uh, finding a career in teaching, whilst also continuing to perform at an elite level in a UK kickboxing. So the other things to look for then are facilities. Um, you know, that's key. This is where you're going to be studying for probably the next three years, potentially longer if you're studying part time. Um, at Staffordshire University, we have industry standard facilities, both on campus and access to some of the some of the best local facilities. And other universities will be the same. And everybody has their own area uh, of sort of niche facilities where they'll develop their expertise. Um, so, for example, ours is biomechanics. Our biomechanics lab is one of the best in Europe. Uh, we're quite currently teaming up with Nike and other um, other clothing manufacturers to design shoes with uh, that don't contain a heel and how that impacts performance. But other universities will have their own uh, areas of strength in terms of facilities and what they can offer. So make sure you do go to open days wherever possible. Have a look around, see how you fit, see if it fits. You know what you're expecting from your course. Um, you know, but every course will have a range and a suite of facilities to utilise. So entry requirements typically for undergraduate courses, and it ranges from course to course, you're looking at 112 to 120 um, UCAS points, and this can be achieved from A-levels or BTEC. Uh, you can use a proportion of AS level points uh, towards your tariff. But the one thing I can't stress to you enough is how important personal statements are. They are really important to us as an institution, and I know from colleagues that work elsewhere, personal statements are just as important. Tell us about yourself. We want to know about you as a student, you as a person. What do you enjoy? What are your interests? What area of the courses are you looking forward to the most? Is it the practical elements? Is it actually uh, the community based projects? Is it the placement? You know, we want to know about you and why you want to be studying at our institution. Um, sometimes we have progression agreements or, or what we call a passport system. It's worth asking your college uh, if, this, if there's one in place with the university that might be local to you. So a little bit about uh, Staffordshire University. For those of you who haven't been um, to our campus, we're having a couple of new buildings now. Uh, our latest one is about to, to go up, our apprenticeship hub. Um, it's modern, it's relevant. Most of our courses are vocationally inspired and we have a guarantee of work experience on all of our sport and exercise courses, which I think is absolutely key. We always achieve really well in, in our employability score, which is where our students move on to employability in their sector of study. Um, at varying levels and we tend to do really really well in that area I think this is a result um, of guaranteed work experience. One of the other things I'd like to uh, talk to you about with regards to staffs and sport and exercise at Staffs University is the standard of um, le lecturers and teaching staff we have. They've not all come through um, the, the typical route which would be undergraduate course, master's qualification, PhD and then into teaching. The majority of our teaching staff have got industry experience which is really, really key, as well as academic um, academic qualifications that are required in the HE sector. And that allows them to deliver a much more flexible course. And again, if it's not staff university you're studying at, one of the key things I would recommend is discussing at the university what sort of experience, background, lectures I've got, 
um, and where their area of expertise lie for your course. So making staff special then, we have high quality, relevant degrees delivered by knowledgeable and approachable staff, which I just talked about. We have lots of value added qualifications embedded into our courses. And again, this will be similar to other institutions. So have a look uh, and see what you get as part of your, your course. But for example, on our Football Coaching and Performance Award, uh, we offer level one and level two NGB uh, opportunities there. A vibrant sports coaching and playing environment. So if you are a player or a coach, we'll support you with that. And you have op outstanding opportunities to get extra hands-on industry professional placements. And I think the next slide um, after this one, we'll show some of our, play, our partners that we work with for placements. So this is the next thing you should look for. Once you've decided what sort of course you want to study, whether that be sports science, PE, therapy, is it accredited um, or endorsed by certain um, professional bodies? So for example, our sports therapy degree is accredited by the Society of Sports Therapists. So that basically ensures a certain quality uh, of content that's within the degree to make sure that when you leave, you're suitable for practice. The sports psychology degree, degree is accredited by the BPS, which is the British Psychologi Psychology Society, apologies. And our sport and exercise science course is endorsed by the British Association of Sport and Exercise Science, otherwise known as BASIS. So these are some of the partners we work with, both internally, externally, um, for a variety of different reasons in different areas. So you might look at that and go, well, there's a lot of football there. And there is lots of football there, but we don't work with them just in football coaching aspects. We work with them in terms of sports psychology, in terms of performance testing, in terms of strength and conditioning. We also work with partners such as the British Equestrian Federation, where we've done multiple um, you know, events and testing with them. The GB Archery team, the rowing team, English cricket boards. There's a whole range of different partners we have. And this is just a few of them as well. So if there's any, you're, you know, you've got a particular sport you're interested in, you want to know what partners we have, uh, that could help with that work placement, just get in touch with the, the course leader and they'll be able to let you know there. Also, look for international opportunities and educational visits. So as part of your course, you know, we've had previous sports visit to Barcelona, to the Academy, uh, to Netherlands, to St. George's Park, um, where we've looked at different talent ID across the range of different um, sports clubs in different countries across, the, across Europe. We also have a link with Challenger Sports, which is a sports coach in the USA. Uh, they recruit quite heavily from Stafford University. So during the summer, uh, when your course finishes with us, they'll come in, they'll talk to you, they'll get you set up, and they offer you an opportunity to go out and teach or coach in America at some of the summer camps, uh, which is paid work. Also link with Camp America for similar, you know, similar experiences. And this is another key one to look for if you're interested in studying abroad as maybe one year of your study is the Erasmus programme, which is uh, about to change its name. So I apologise for having Erasmus in there because it's about to get a, a new title. Um, however, we have links with universities in Paris, uh, in Spain, in Turkey, where if there's an element of your course you want to go and study in a different country, you can do for a year and the modules carry across uh, to the course you would be studying in the UK, which just gives you a bit of a unique experience going um, you know, try a different culture or a different educational setting as well. And other universities are a part of the Erasmus program. So again, at open days, visits, it's worth asking, um, you know, what opportunities you have potentially to study abroad, if that's something you're interested in. So this is a little bit about what our students say. And student feedback is really important. Um, it's key that you look at NSS feedback, um, which I'll put the website in the chat for those of you who aren't familiar with that afterwards. Uh, but that gives you the opportunity to compare courses uh, and it's all done by students, so it's student feedback led. I'm just going to reshare my screen because I don't think I shared sound, so apologies for this. The facilities for me personally were really useful to my studies. We got to go on the AstroTurf to practice our football coaching. Uh, we got to use the biomechanics lab when we completed and we were undertaking the biomechanics and physiology module. And we also got to use gym equipment and the sports hall when we were studying the strength and conditioning module. Best part of the course was probably the experiencing the different 
tap the sports and um, doing the curriculum. So in the first year, we did loads of events. We did like trampolining, did uh, outdoor adventures, athletics. So in the early days, that was really positive to get a good, um, a really good basis of what the course was going to be about. There's a um, thing called peak conditioning where we can use everything that we've learned for real life situations. So we've had like the public come in and we've like done a bunch of um, like testing on them and it's been really, really fun and like interesting. So yeah, I think it's like experience has been a main thing for us and it's been great. I found the lectures on the course really good, like whenever you needed help they'd be there 20 or 7, they were literally just an email away because I can use to anyway so if I needed um, just like a 10 minute talk I'd just come in and they'd be happy to deal with me at any point, they'd um, email me, they'd come in and see me so yeah, they, they really did help. Facilities were really good, like especially in the exercise science department and like uh, in terms of support, like whenever you'd email anyone or even if you dropped in to sell out they're always there always always there like uh, all the staff that I encountered were really helpful and they sort of supported me above and beyond what's really they expected to be okay so that's just a little bit about what our students say and um, to highlight really the importance of student feedback so whatever university it is that you're considering it's really important you go and look at what the students uh, how the students feel about the course, the university and the, the mode of study. Um, so these are some of our former students, which we call alumni. And we often bring them uh, back in where we can to utilise them in some teaching experiences and to talk about their experiences. So we have Andrew Triggs Hodge, who is an Olympic gold medalist, uh, Jermaine Allen, who actually won the Super Bowl with the New Orleans Saints, and Josh Gordon, who um, signed for Leicester City while studying with us at Stafford University, uh, now plays for Walsall. So open days, we, I've already mentioned, really, really key. There's a lot of things for you to go and explore with the different universities you go to look at. Is the high quality teaching and learning on show? Do you feel like the teaching and learning is going to be of, of, of good quality? Um, are the staff supportive, open and friendly? You know, that's, again, you need to be, be able to build a rapport with the staff that you're working with. Um, research and industry formed tutors. Again, that's one thing I mentioned. I think we do well at staffs, but it's worth checking wherever you go for an open day. What is their research background like? What's their industry experience? And how is this going to help um, make your course a uh, you know, better experience? Um, also, you know, you need to be committed to the development and support of a partnership. There's one thing I should mention, going to university, um, it can often feel like you know, you, you're going there to get your education uh, and that's it. And the, the staff should be there to teach you, but it's not, it's a partnership. We need you to commit um, to the university as much as we commit to you as a student. Um, and that's really important for you to have a successful time there. Um, our next open day at Stafford University is on the 27th of March. So if you are interested, please feel free to, to sign up by the, the university website, which again, I'll pop in the chat at the end. Uh, but if there is any, any other universities you're interested or you're exploring, if you can uh, access their website, they'll normally have a list of open day dates for you to go and attend. Okay, so they're just some of our social media things. I just wanted to, um, I didn't want to talk too much because I wanted to make sure I give you plenty of opportunity to ask any questions you may have about different courses um, or anything I can support with or help with in terms of, um, you know, giving you a little bit more uh, knowledge, industry knowledge of those areas. So I don't know if anybody wants to use the chat function um, and the conversation function just to ask any questions you might have. Please feel free, don't be shy if you have got any questions. If uh, you think of any questions you wanted to ask afterwards, if you uh, email them to me, then I will uh, gladly pass them on. Do you want me to put my uh, email address in the chat, Paul, and then people who uh, watch the recording should be able to have access to that? Yes, certainly, if you're good, that'd be great. So I've just pop my email address into the chat and I'll just get the NSS website as well. Add it there so you guys are able to, to compare and look at different universities. And like I said, please don't be shy. If there are any questions, just pop them in the chat. Well, that's great. Thank you so much, Dan. No problem at all. Thank you for inviting me to come and talk to you. I really appreciate it.
Not at all. As I said, we were recording this, which I'll just stop in a moment, and uh, this will be made available online uh, with uh, so students can access that. Uh, thank you once again. And any students 